Disney Star Wars is nothing more than a political propaganda machine for Lucasfilm. That's it. That's all it is. It does not represent the world that George Lucas created. You did something very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. We call them Mujahideen. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. Exactly. So were you thinking of that at the time? Yes. We're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. The little, the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical em the, empire. The English empire. Right? The English the empire, empire, the American empire, yeah. lost. Now, I've been waiting for this one for a fair bit because like with my GTA video last week, I of course know that Star Wars is woke and political and all that stuff. I've just been waiting for these nerd channels to start crying about it when one of the newer properties says it's making like an explicit political statement. Like with GTA, like I always knew it was like woke, anti-conservative and all the rest of it. I was just waiting for someone to start saying how GTA is going woke, not that it hasn't always been woke. So for today's video, we are going to discuss the backlash to Andor and some of the comments made by people involved in the show about Donald Trump and how it set off a bunch of conservative nerds, basically saying this type of politics has no place in Star Wars, despite the fact that Emperor Palpatine was based on Richard Nixon, despite the fact his depiction and things like episode three are based on George Bush, despite the fact that Darth Vader is kind of based on Dick Cheney. So making a Star Wars show which, you know, tackles something to do with Trump, that's too far. That's too woke. Never been done before in Star Wars. Never been done by George Lucas himself. So what we're gonna do in the video is look at the backlash and then I just wanna use this as a jumping off point to talk about the left-wing politics of Star Wars at large, mainly focusing on the politics of George Lucas. And we have some nice videos lined up so you guys can hear it for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Take it from George. And then just discuss why, again, conservatives and CSAW nerd channels and their fans cannot analyze media properly and how they do not understand that certain things have left-wing messaging. Whether you like that left-wing messaging or not does not mean it's not actually there in the first place. So before we go any further, please like the video for today's question. What is the absolute worst property that anti SW nerd channels have completely missed the point of? The one that springs to mind the most, and I made an actual video on it, was um, anti SW nerds complaining that the sequel to District 9, District 10, was going to go woke. It was going to go political because there was nothing political about District 9 at all. No, it's a fun sci fi movie set in South Africa where aliens were forced to live away from the rest of the human populace. Totally no messages about apartheid in the 1980s or the Zimbabwe refugee crisis in South Africa. Also, follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out my subreddit down in the description. If you want, consider becoming a patron. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, and the benefits of that are getting access to my Nintendo Switch friend code and my private patrons Discord server. Also check out the second channel, the Cavernacle Extra, and I hope to start archiving my live streams when I continue to do them. So before we get into discussing how Star Wars has always been political, how Star Wars has always tackled contemporary politics, Let's first start with what has set these people off. So the Disney Plus series Andor has gotten trailers recently, and honestly, I think it looks really good. And apparently they're using like real sets, real locations, which most Star Wars shows have not been using in favor of like using video game engines. In that like hangar studio you see in the behind the scenes of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian. So it actually looks good, and I really like the tone because I think Rogue One is by far the best Star Wars movie out of the recent ones. Just, you know, a nice blend of the original trilogy and the darker tone of the prequels. Obviously one of my favorite Star Wars movies, if I'm being honest, and of course, had a lot of political messaging about revolution and rebellion and is there steps you can go that are too far and how much do you have to sacrifice yourself to fulfill all this revolution? Again, political Star Wars, but Andor looks very much to be following that tone. Of course, not surprising when it's actually focused on one of the main characters from Rogue One, but with this little preview of an Empire issue, which talks about Andor more, but this is what has set a load of them off. Andor is Star Wars's scurrilous take on the Trumpian world. 
says Fiona Shaw. So let's get into this. So in many ways, it's not surprising that Tony Gilroy has taken on a Star Wars project of his own with the upcoming series Andor. After all, he was majorly involved in Rogue One, the film from which this new adventure originates and on which he's credited as a co-writer. But elsewhere, he's been less known for sci-fi adventures and scripting gritty political and legal thrillers like the original Bourne trilogy and Michael Clayton, which he also directed. Admitting he has no interest in Star Wars generally, he's taken the origin story of Diego Luna's Cassian Andor and is using it as a means to tell a Tony Gilroy story in the galaxy far, far away, one delving into the political machinations of the Empire in full swing and the desperate fight to bring it down. So I wouldn't say that... The writer of the Bourne trilogy is the most woke lefty going, but let's go into it a bit further. The result is something with considerable contemporary resonance. Tony has written a great take on the Trumpian world, says Fiona Shaw, who plays Marva in the series. Our world is exploding in different places right now. People's rights are disappearing and Andor reflects that in the show. The Empire is taking over and it feels like the same thing is happening in reality too. Set in the five years running up to Rogue One, the series will expand upon Luna's not exactly clean cut hero, Cassian Andor, began that film by shooting his own informants and the efforts undertaken by the rising rebels to fight back against Palpatine's regime. I was impressed by Tony's social realist intention, Shaw continues. He's created a whole new morality. It's very deep and humane. There is grief, mourning, hope, fear. It's not just primary colors here. For Gilroy himself, the series continues in the tradition of the rest of his work. Andor comes from the same place as everything else that's come out of his office, he tells Empire, from his LA workspace. Clayton, the Bournes, the devil's advocate, now this. It's a full-on drama. The result is insanely ambitious, dark, and real, according to Diego Luna. Even as Tony was pitching me, I was like, this is amazing, you are sick. So honestly, that interview made me more excited for the show that it is going to be very dark and I guess loads of shades of grey in there, just kind of like Rogue One itself, but with a lot more time to actually delve into these characters over about, I think, 12 episodes, which is a pretty long one of these shows. So yeah, I'm hyped. I like Rogue One. I like that character. What he says has me hyped. And also the comment about the Trumpian world doesn't seem to really single out Donald Trump. And although I would say it's quite a Western-centric thing to be like, you know, our rights are being you know, stripped away by people like Donald Trump and the Supreme Court, which of course influences Star Wars, American politics always does. I didn't see this as someone basically saying, this show is about Trump, because it's not gonna be about Trump. It might be about the American empire because, fun fact for everyone, the actual empire was inspired by America and their actions in Vietnam, which we're going to get into in a bit, don't worry. But I thought it'd be fun first to listen to the anti HW backlash. Now, loads of these nerd channels have made videos about this saying that, you know, Star Wars has gone woke, it's gonna be about Trump and Orange Man bad. But Jeremy being one of the most zealous Trump supporters, I thought it'd be fun to focus on what he's saying and also just sets us up nicely for the rest of the video how he talks about Star Wars essentially ruining the legacy of George Lucas, infamous apolitical George Lucas. So let's have a look. Disney Star Wars is nothing more than a political propaganda machine for Lucasfilm. That's it, that's all it is. It does not represent the world that George Lucas created. It's not meant to respect the fan base. It's not meant to respect the characters or anything like that. Disney spent $4 billion just so they could have a political propaganda machine, 40 years worth of fan base built in so they could spew their nonsense. And the latest example is Andor. Here you have a star of the film telling you that it is a story about Donald Trump. A Star Wars series is about Donald J. Trump the 45th president of the United States of America, and these people cannot stop talking about him. They can't stop talking about how he's the worst thing that's ever existed, and now you're taking a series that is iconic, that has one of the largest fan bases in all of fandom, and you're trying to push current politics into it for your agenda. It's over if you're a fan of the original trilogy, if you're a fan of uh, the prequels, if you're a fan of the Clone Wars, if you're a fan of any of that, if you're a fan of the expanded universe, 
Disney Star Wars does not represent that in any way, shape, or form. They want you to believe that's part of what they're doing. They want you to believe that it's part of it so they can then take your fandom, bring you into the equation, and then push their left-wing agenda onto you. So I tweeted about this today, and I was just thinking about why do anti-SJWs think stuff like the sequel films are really woke, but they think that anything that came before the Disney purchase of Star Wars was somehow not woke, not left-wing, not political, despite the fact that it was far more political under George Lucas than it has ever been under Disney. It's many reasons, but I think fundamentally these people aren't film fans. They also have a really, really poor knowledge of history and politics. So in their mind, the only thing that is really woke is diverse casting, but they can't actually analyze a film's message. They don't actually realize that most of the stuff they like has left-wing messaging. Like recently, they've been saying that the Dune film that came out is just great. Doesn't focus on uh, SJW woke nonsense, just a great movie, despite the fact the director comes out and says, yeah, it's like, you know, anti-capitalist message, despite the fact the book has loads of anti-colonial messages, which translate very effectively into the movie. Don't care about that stuff. It's only if you change the skin color of someone or hire a black woman to play a Jedi, then that's when they get mad. Now to address his comments in that, it just makes me laugh. He's saying that, you know, if you're a fan of anything before Disney Star Wars, then they're ruining it. They're taking contemporary politics and now it's a left-wing political propaganda machine. When it's pretty clear from the interview I just read you, which I've taken out of context, it's not going to be about Donald Trump. It probably will be very political because Star Wars, newsflash, has always been extremely political. Now let's go back to the one where people say it's not very political. Let's go back to the first Star Wars movie, right? And like I said, these people do not have a good knowledge of film. They do not understand about the directors who came out of the 1960s, who mostly were all friends of each other and all did have these fairly progressive left-wing views when it came to films. So George Lucas was besties with Francis Ford Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola essentially helped him get most of his movies into cinemas in the first place. Like American Graffiti, I wonder how many anti SJW Star Wars fans have watched American Graffiti, which has a little bit about the Vietnam War, but it's just generally observational about 1960s culture. And then of course you have like Steven Spielberg in there as well, Martin Scorsese, Oliver Stone, these new American filmmakers who are pushing more critiques of society, capitalism, loads of different things in their movies. And that's where George Lucas comes out of as well. And he's always said he's wanted to tell stories with messages about them. And he has always wanted to make these things political. And there's a really good interview of George Lucas with Charlie Rose, I believe, where he talks a lot about these things. I'm gonna show you some clips today. But there was a really great interview, and I always bring this clip up, and it's George Lucas talking with James Cameron, obviously two massive titans in sci-fi film. And they talk about the political inspirations for the original Star Wars films. And notice how he says the rebels are the NLF, or as Americans know them, the Viet Cong, and he calls America an empire and says America are the bad guys. Oh my God, left woke communist George Lucas I guess Star Wars was woke from the very first film, which was written in 1973 as a response to the Vietnam War. So have a look at this clip. In school, I was of the, I don't know, angry young man. Student. Sure, you were a so, rebel. Uh, I come out of anthropology. Yeah. So my focus is social systems. Right. And in science fiction you got two branches one is science yeah and the other is social right i'm much more of the 1984 kind of guy sure i am thx 1138 the, the, the spaceship guy yeah did something very interesting with star wars if you think about it the good guys are the rebels they're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire i think call them mujahideen when i did it they were Viet Cong. exactly so were you thinking of that at the time? Yes. So it was a very anti-authoritarian, very kind of 60s, against the man kind of thing, nested or, deep inside of or, a, a fantasy. Or a colonial, you know, we're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. Yep. The irony of that one is in in both of those, the little, the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical, in the, empire, the English Empire, right? English the Empire, empire. the American Empire, yeah. lost. Yeah, that was the whole point. But that's a classic 
us not profiting from the lesson of history. You look at the situation now, where America is so proud of being the biggest economy, the most powerful military force on the planet, it's become the empire in the, from the perspective of a lot of people around the world. It was the empire during the Vietnam War. So that should be the nail in the coffin for any argument anyone ever makes to you that Star Wars was not woke, is not left-wing, doesn't have left-wing messages in it, when the creator of the whole franchise, the guy who directed and wrote the first film, the guy who wrote the other two original trilogy films, the guy who wrote and directed all the prequels is saying that yes, Star Wars was inspired by the Vietnam War. America is an empire. America was an empire when he wrote this. The rebels are inspired by the communist Viet Cong fighting the American empire. I mean, if one actor in a Star Wars TV show says the show is a response to the Trumpian world, and that's all woke and stuff. What do you call this? What do you call the creator of Star Wars saying America is an empire? What do you say about that right-wing patriotic Trump supporting Star Wars fans? Got anything to say about that? Got anything to say about how the series isn't woke and how it doesn't reflect the general politics of George Lucas, its creator, who is pretty left-leaning, has described himself as a 60s guy and says that's why he does have these progressive politics. Now we're gonna move on to the prequels because the prequels, of course, far more political because half the you know whole trilogy is actually about like literal politics but i want to talk about george lucas's own politics and how that's influenced the films so there was actually a really interesting bit of this interview with charlie rose that he gave where he said soviet filmmakers have more freedom to make films do you know why because they are not bound by profits and capitalism which puts them into a narrow box so have a look at george lucas saying this but i do like movies i love movies and i know a lot of movies aren't popular and you can say that going in why one of the reasons i retired is so i could make movies that aren't popular because in the world we live in in the system we've created for ourselves in terms of it's a, a big industry you cannot lose money so the point is that you have to you're forced to make a particular kind of movie and i used to say this all the time when people uh you know back when uh russia was the the union of soviet socialist right. republics and they'd say oh but aren't you so glad that you're in america i said well i know a lot of russian filmmakers and they have a lot more freedom than i have all they have to do is be careful about criticizing the government. Otherwise, they can do anything and they so want. And so what do you have to do? You have to adhere to a very narrow line of commercialism. And there's only certain... And it, look, when I started in the 70s, it was like this. You know, I could say Russia was like this, but we were like this. You could do a certain kind of movie. And I flaunted that system. I mean, THX, my first film, is definitely not at a an American film, and I shoved it in sideways, and we, Francis helped me trick the studio. Yeah, right, right. It, nobody, they would have never let me make that movie if they knew what I was doing. So he's basically saying there that Francis Ford Coppola, who was more of a Hollywood insider, helped him get his first movies even made because he lied to the studios for him because in the capitalist system of the film world, they would never actually help make George Lucas's film. And it happened with American Graffiti as well, where he showed it to the executives, and they said, this movie is trash and they might not even release it until people like Francis Ford Coppola help convince them. And then it became a very renowned film that still holds up very well to this day. The soundtrack on that film is really, really good. I'd recommend it to anyone. If you like Days and Confused starring Matthew McConaughey and Ben Affleck, you will like American Graffiti, which pretty much is like the prequel to that film. I know they're not actually related, but they are very, very similar. So it's pretty clear that George Lucas does not really like capitalism. And in that whole interview, he talks about the movie process, how capitalism has made people make movies that don't take risks, that aren't art, that are safe bets for the studio, which are just designed to make money. And that's why there's so many like Marvel films and sequels. Really, really insightful interview. I really do love movies, so I love listening to George Lucas talk about why he became so disillusioned and why he actually sold Star Wars, which he was actually developing a seventh movie, and talking about why he doesn't actually like The Force Awakens, which was really, really interesting as well. So yeah, clearly, George Lucas, pretty left-wing guy. Although I would say there is some, you know, racist elements of the prequel films, I do respect the message, and it's pretty clear that George Lucas is always trying to give his political opinion through his movies, where I'd say why the sequels are so bad is there is no message. What is the point of the sequels films? Like, I don't know, Empire bad? 
First Order, which is a carbon copy of the Empire, but worse. Bad. These guys are good. No nuance. The only thing, really, the sequels are just really, really boring rehashes. And even as George Lucas said, they wanted something retro. And he wasn't interested in doing something retro. He always wanted to tell something new. And even if you don't like the prequels, I think everyone can appreciate that the prequels are nothing like the original films because George Lucas wasn't interested in just rehashing what he'd already done, where all the sequel movies are literally like if you took the original trilogy and stuck it in a blender, there is nothing original about those mostly trash films. I absolutely hate episode nine. You guys will know. I think it's one of the worst movies ever made. And just one of the most soulless corporate cash grabs I've ever witnessed. I hate the MCU generally. I think it's worse than every MCU film. Just absolute garbage. But on that note, let's talk more about the politics of George Lucas. Now we're going to go into the prequels now. And it was very evident to everyone at the time that this was a response to the George Bush era of neoconservatism, just like Grand Theft Auto 4. So Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith is kind of inspired by George Bush, but before he was actually inspired by Richard Nixon. So there you go, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. Not Orange Man bad, but Nixon bad. George Bush bad. It seems that if they did want to criticize Trump, it'd be pretty on brand for Star Wars movies. So just this article by Neil Harrington puts a lot of it together, which was really good. So um, George Lucas admitted himself without reservation that the emperor is based on President Nixon and his regime when asked if the emperor was a Jedi back in 1981. No, he was a politician. Richard M. Nixon was his name. He subverted the Senate and finally took over and became an imperial guy. And he was really evil, but he pretended to be a really nice guy. The Vietnam War heavily influenced the plot line and characters for the original trilogy, says George Lucas. It was really about the Vietnam War, which got me thinking historically about how democracies turned into dictatorships. And then just to link it to the prequels, if you think George Lucas was blunt with his original Star Wars films, the prequel trilogy pushed the limit even further. He has this to say about the inspiration for Anakin Skywalker's fall to the dark side of the Force. Anakin Skywalker is a promising young man who is turned to the dark side by an older politician and becomes Darth Vader. George Bush is Darth Vader and Cheney is the Emperor. So I think I got a little mixed up earlier where I said that George Bush was the Emperor and Dick Cheney was Darth Vader, but I think they're kind of like interchangeable in that respect. Man, Disney Star Wars is really the woke one. Not the old Star Wars, which literally made the main villains inspired by US presidents and the bad guys inspired by the US military. Nothing woke about that. Nothing left wing about that. It's Disney Star Wars with its female main characters. That's the real left wing wokeness in Hollywood. So here's an interview in 2005 where George Lucas talks about the politics of the third film and just the prequels in general. American politics has always been behind these films. People have read in from the very beginning, they read in the relationship between the US and the Soviet Union, Watergate. Now, in this episode, without quite being Michael Moore, it is very political. There are references to have we become what we feared. There are references to the State of the Republic. How, how intentional was that for you? Well, uh, the story, the political backstory was written 30 years ago. It was written during the Vietnam War and in the Richard Nixon era. I didn't want to do a movie about how people take over democracy. I wanted to figure out how democracies give themselves over to tyrants. And, uh, you know, like after the Roman Senate kills Caesar, why did they turn the whole thing over to his nephew? You know, here's an interesting thing about democracy is if you don't treat it well, if you don't do your job, especially if you're a representative in the Senate or the Parliament or whatever, um, you know, the whole thing can go awry because if you're always bickering and not agreeing on things and doing the people's work, who elected you, a tyrant will come in and take over and do it for you because the people want to get the job done and they will tend to go where the, the, the person that's got the most leadership is. So there can be no doubts about George Lucas's own politics here. There can be no doubts about what, I guess, political side he's on or what side Star Wars has generally been on under George Lucas's direction because there seems to be this narrative that Star Wars only went woke when Disney bought them, and I would say the complete opposite, I would say Star Wars has been sanitized of all its political edge, apart from some elements of Rogue One, and of course some good stuff from the Clone Wars, which I still feel is influenced by George Lucas since he helped develop the animated show, and Dave Filoni is essentially his own apprentice. But the sequel films have nothing to say. Can you imagine Ryan Johnson coming out and saying, yeah, Kylo Ren is based on Donald Trump, and the First Order 
are the American military. How do you think that would go over? But George Lucas did say that. Imagine how crazy anti ashadabis would go if they were around in, I don't know, 1977 or 1999 or 2005 when George Lucas made all these comments. But even at the time, there were comparisons in the media between episode three and George Bush. And there was a good article I wanted to read about after they showed it at Cannes Film Festival and the reaction to it. And I think the interview we just heard was just after that. And I do think it's funny they say Michael Moore because George Lucas said in the interview with Charlie Rose that he did want to be like the first Michael Moore. Like, like if his film career didn't really take off in mainstream Hollywood, he just wanted to make documentaries which told stories about America. So May 16th, 2005, CBS News, Sif invites Bush comparisons. So at the Cannes premiere on the night of May 15th, actors in white Stormtrooper costumes paraded up and down the red carpet as guests strolled in. Lucas said he patterned his story after historical transformations from freedom to fascism, never figuring when he'd started his prequel trilogy in the late 1990s that current events might parallel his space fantasy. As you go through history, I didn't think it was going to get quite this close, so it's just one of those reoccurring things. I hope this doesn't come true in our country. Maybe the film will wake people up to the situation. Lucas never mentioned the president by name, but it was eager to speak his mind on US policy in Iraq, careful again to note that he created the story long before the Bush-led occupation. When I wrote it, Iraq didn't exist. And he's talking about the war of Iran. We didn't think of Saddam Hussein as the enemy at the time. We were going after Iran, using him as our surrogate, just as we did in Vietnam. The parallels between what we did in Vietnam and what we're doing in Iraq now are unbelievable. So obviously he makes references to Rome and Caesar. And of course, it's pretty easy to see the parallels between Revenge of the Sith and the fall of the Weimar Republic. Chancellor Palpatine, you have this big fire at the Jedi Temple. Essentially what he does is the Reichstag fire so he can persecute and get rid of all the Jedi, just as the Germans did with all the communists after the Reichstag fire. So George Lucas was clearly trying to tell a political woke lefty story with the prequels, which the press talked about at the time because it was obvious, right? It was obvious. And only if you're an anti hw right winger would you watch these films and think there's nothing political about them despite the fact there is like literal space politics in these films. But this is just a snippet, right? I'm not doing like some deep dives analyzing everything to do with all the Star Wars films. It's just like a very surface reading and someone who knows a fair bit about like film history and George Lucas and you know this type of cinema coming out of the 60s and 70s in America. But I think it fundamentally shows that Obviously, Star Wars has always been telling a political story, has always been telling a left-wing story, has been inspired by communist movements, have been inspired by anti-conservative, anti-war movements in America. Again, not very subtle if all the press are talking about it when you release your movie. Maybe you could miss it in the original trilogy and see it as a more like standard good versus bad, using the classic old Hollywood trope of getting British people to play the villains. So maybe you could think, oh, it's actually... The British Empire, I understand how you could miss that. You cannot miss it with the prequels at all. And it's hilarious that Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers would even say that it's Disney that are making it left wing. It's Disney that are ruining it. When all the best political commentary was done when George Lucas owned the franchise. Even the Clone Wars, which was mostly aired when he owned Star Wars, that had the best political commentary. And the Clone Wars goes massively into the politics of war and humanizes the separatist side. So I feel like that's very effective and the show the series has always been left wing. And like I said, I find it hilarious that it's now they are turning against Star Wars for political reasons. When Star Wars has never been more sanitized for its politics, this is when apparently it's gone woke and left wing. And I'm actually happy that someone involved in Andor came out and said it is a response to the Trumpian world because this is what Star Wars is. Star Wars is a response to contemporary politics. And she didn't say it's a response to Donald Trump, the Trumpian world. The Trumpian world could be a stand-in for like the Randian world, like this hyper-capitalist objectivist society we are still living in, which really was unleashed in the 1980s. Absolutely no problem with her saying that. When you actually read the interview, it's pretty clear it's not a response to Donald Trump himself. And it's going to be lots of shades of grey, just like Rogue One, and really talk about what it means to be a rebel and how much you have to sacrifice of your own self 
to achieve these political goals. Again, people whining about Star Wars going left wing is absolutely ridiculous. Star Wars was better when it was left wing. Star Wars would be better if it returned to its roots of actually criticizing real world political issues or using them as inspiration for its films because that's what George Lucas often did so well. And regardless of what you think of the Star Wars movies, especially the prequels, you can't deny the actual story was a good one. Even if you don't like the films, you think they look bad or the acting is bad, you can't deny the story was actually good and there has been so much lost because they didn't have any interest in bringing Lucas in in any capacity. Conservatives, please just get some critical thinking skills. There is no shame in liking stuff made by the other side of the political spectrum. There are plenty of films I appreciate or at least respect from conservative filmmakers. You do not have to be a left-wing person to necessarily tell a good story or make a good piece of art. Although I do feel generally the best artists are left-wing because you have to challenge the status quo and challenge like the systems that govern us. But yeah, there are conservative movies I like. No shame in me admitting that. Maybe you guys can do the same. Instead of complaining that everything has gone woke and it never used to be woke, it's a modern thing. Despite the fact that even if Star Wars was criticizing Trump, George Lucas literally said Palpatine was inspired first by Richard Nixon, then by Dick Cheney, and Darth Vader was inspired by President Bush. Anyway, thank you for listening to my video about woke lefty Star Wars. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching.